I should have updated this a while back because when I first created this, the on-screen controls took precedence and Apple changed the precedence of objects in the viewer so that it's text first and on-screen controls second. But the main point is you have to have access to those on-screen controls. If you lose access to those, then this feels like something that's broken and it's not. And anytime you have text and on-screen controls in the same space, you'll notice you cannot have access to the on-screen controls if they're behind the text. So if you're going to design this first and you need to move this arrow around, what you need to do is get rid of the text. Now reset this to its uh, default position. here and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and select the text and type a space okay and now I, I can grab hold of these on-screen controls to create the arrow direction now if you're going to animate the arrow on and off the canvas or the viewer here you're going to need a little extra room on the side so that you can drag these off and you're just going to basically set up the shape or the path that the arrow is going to travel and then you can add the text back alright and Go to the title pane and let's see. It's been a while since I've looked at this. You have all of these controls down here is the uh, font controls. So we have tracking, baseline scale, offset. All right, so if I go to offset, this is where you can animate your text. So if you want the text to move along this path, uh, you can set. A keyframe just at the beginning here start with that <clears throat> let's move this back off the screen move the playhead forward in time now you once you set your first keyframe you don't have to set a second one all you have to do is move the playhead and then change the parameter so now when we play this back the text moves along the path Okay, that's one thing to do. What we need to do is get to the first point offset and the last point offset of the arrow. So we'll go back and a nice way to find your first keyframe for the first thing you did is go back to the parameter the offset parameter and you'll see that once you have a keyframe set up here you have forward and reverse angles little arrow kind of things on either side if you click on this one that'll take you back to where you set your first keyframe and we can set go back up here and set our keyframe on the last point offset let's just go ahead and drag this down to here and set a keyframe and we're going to want to match the move to the text so the arrow needs to disappear off the screen right at about that point and you can add more keyframes as you need to keep that tighter if you want let's go ahead and start one here where it's the end to the last point uh, I mean the first point offset we'll set a keyframe here and then right when the text disappears right about there we'll set the first point offset to pull in behind it like that
So that's the basic steps you need to use to use the Flexi Arrow for animation on the screen. Uh, anything that has a keyframe diamond shape here on the side can be keyframed, which means you can do things like have the color change as it moves over the path. I've actually got this set up to where you can keyframe the direction point. Uh, normally that would be a checkbox. All you have to do is pass the 50% mark. So if you have the arrow go one direction for a period of time, you can have it stop and change direction and go back if you like. You can have the arrow on and off or different opacities. And you know, just go ahead and play with all of these different kinds of uh, parameters. There's a ton of stuff here for you to customize.